All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Robin Tung, and today I'm going to talk to you about digital signal processing using the fast Fourier transform algorithm. So to get started, uh, let's talk about what is digital signal processing. So it's the process whereby we take real world phenomena and translate it into digital data to analyze it, manipulate it, or synthesize it. And this is done by sampling a signal with an instrument. It could be a camera or a microphone. And that in turn generates a sequence of numbers that represent continuous variables in a domain like time, space, or frequency. So what this, could this possibly be used for? Well, really, it's anything that deals with waves. And I love this artist's rendition of the great wave off Kanagawa. It kind of provides a great visual metaphor for us as we're talking about digital signal processing. You have the natural waveform on the left uh, being mapped and translated into the digital uh, graphical representation on the right. So if we're dealing with uh, audio, that means we're talking about sound waves. Graphics or images are light waves. As you can see, the list really goes on and on and on um, for any kind of data that's going to repeat over time. Uh, there is one application which is not recommended for digital signal processing. That would be uh, cats. This cat does not appear to be happy to have his fast Fourier transform taken. So uh, we can get various types of signals through sampling, but once we have that information, how can we translate it into data that we're going to analyze, change, or recreate? That's where the Fourier transform comes in. Um, there was a French mathematician named Joseph Fourier who had this crazy idea that a complex waveform, it could be light, heat, or sound, um, can be essentially broken down into its component parts, which is just a group of simple sine waves. And uh, this is the equation that he came up with to do that. It's called the discrete Fourier transform. Essentially, the discrete Fourier transform is a mapping of data between two domains. Uh, we take input in the time domain, and we get output in the frequency domain. We use uh, zero-based zero indexing, uh, where you can see lowercase n starts at zero, and we're summing up until uh, n minus one. Um, x sub n represents the nth element of the input, and x sub k represents the kth element of the output. Lowercase x denotes uh, our time signal, uppercase x is our frequency signal, and the signal level at frequency k is just equal to the sum of the signal level at each time n multiplied by that complex exponential that you see on the right. Wow, that's a lot of math. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is make an analogy to kind of talk about what really is going on here. So let's say I went down the street to the juice bar and I got this delicious apple carrot juice and I liked it so much that I wanted to be able to make it again at home. Um, so let's say in theory I could take the Fourier transform of this juice. Well, what that would mean is setting up a couple filters. We could have an apple filter and a carrot filter. And if we pour this juice through the various filters, it's going to return the number of apples, say one apple, and the number of carrots. So now I've gone from juice to the recipe. And if I wanted to make this again or improve upon the recipe, I could do that. Um, and so essentially that's what the Fourier transform does. The Fourier transform uh, takes uh, a waveform and finds its recipe. Uh, so now that we know a little bit about how this algorithm works, let's take, it, take a look at what it might uh, be to implement this in JavaScript. And I have here um, just a really basic um, implementation. It's not actual code. It's, it's really pseudocode. Uh, but you can see our Fourier transform uh, function is going to take some amplitudes. These are complex numbers. And it's going to map over these amplitudes. Uh, we're going to set up a sum. And at each point in the amplitudes, we're multiplying uh, the amplitudes by the complex exponential, uh, which is creating this sum, which is returned back to the amplitudes array. Now, uh, as you can see, this uh, algorithm would really take a long time to run. Its computational time would be O of n squared, because we're essentially multiplying the sample size times itself. That's why uh, in the 1960s, there were two researchers, James Cooley and John Tuckey, 
who wanted to improve upon this, and they came up with what is known as the fast Fourier transform. They were able to re-express this discrete Fourier transform recursively to reduce the computational time to O of n log n, which is a lot faster. And here's our example, uh, sorry, fast Fourier transform. Okay. And so again, it's simply taking in this array of amplitudes. Since it's a recursive algorithm, we have to set up a base case where the length of the amplitudes array is less than or equal to one. We're simply going to return that array. And the algorithm uh, basically applies a divide and conquer strategy where it takes the amplitudes array performs an interleaving, breaking it up into uh, an array of the even indexes and odd indexes. Then it recurses on each of those uh, interleaved arrays and performs the discrete Fourier transform on the smaller arrays uh, as these rec recursive cases uh, return and then uh, combines them at the end. Uh, now, obviously, I'm giving you a really fast overview of this fast algorithm, um, which doesn't get into the complex math that's involved in combining the arrays. And that's because to do that would really qu require a math lesson or two uh, in and of itself, which I don't have time for today. And this sort of brings me to another great point that I have, which is that as developers, um, we don't have to implement these algorithms uh, in our programming language of choice because there's many great libraries which are going to do this for us. And there's a few JavaScript libraries that I want to talk about uh, which we can leverage to get Fourier transforms of some kind of uh, data that we're working with. There's DSPJS, um, which I like because it implements an FFT object and really kind of gives you access to the inner workings of how an FFT uh, would function. <coughs> There's also p5.js, which is really cool because it's sort of geared towards artists who want to visualize um, data. It could be sound data uh, or any other kind of waveform that you want to visualize. And also the Web Audio API uh, t is able to take the fast Fourier transform of audio and um, basically give us the, the frequencies. So I've built a small uh, demo app that I have running here to kind of show you a little bit about how these libraries work. And what it's intended to do is basically take a sample, um, get the recipe of that audio sample, and then it's going to recreate the signal using an oscillator. So let's get started. This is a really cool little um, sound recorder that I found. Uh, I'm going to take a sample of myself whistling here. Now if I click again, it's going to save that and play it back for me. And we saw a really neat like visual representation of the frequency data that the P5 FFT is returning. We're just mapping that to these different rectangles around a circle here. So now let's go back and see what the recipe of this audio data would be. Uh, here is uh, sort of another fun canvas, which is mapping over uh, our FFT and returning the frequency levels uh, at different points in our sample. Below that, <coughs> I wanted to show these are the two, the two arrays that the FFT is going to return. Um, that we have points in the real, real space and imaginary space, which kind of, if you remember vectors, like that's how we compute a vector on a graph. And together, those are the complex numbers that we're returning. As you can see, these arrays kind of go on and on and on um, because we're sampling uh, 2048 uh, different samples of that audio signal. Okay. And finally, uh, what we would want to try and do is recreate that signal. And the Web Audio API has this really great thing where you can set up an oscillator and then you can create a periodic waveform with that oscillator. And what I can actually do is take these FFT arrays, the real and imaginary arrays, pass it to that oscillator, and it's going to oscillate at these frequencies. So let's hear what that sounds like. Cool. So not quite exactly how my whistle sounded. Uh, it's a little bit fuzzy and kind of uh, rough around the edges. And one of the reasons for that uh, is probably the FFT size that we're taking. The fast Fourier transform can 
come in many different sizes. Um, the particular implementation here is what's known as a Radix 2 uh, implementation of the Fast Fourier transform, um, or base 2, where basically the FFT size has to be a multiple of 2 because it's performing that interleaving on even and odd indexes. Uh, with this little drop down here, I could change the FFT size. And as you'll see, if I pick a different size here, it really changes um, the resultant data that I can get. I'm just going to look at that again with another size. Um, if I choose a really big size, it's going to perform really a nice fine uh, anal analysis on this data. And if I listen to that again, it's a little bit soft, but you can hear that that, um, that, that finer analysis with the larger FFT size is a little bit smoother and maybe a little bit closer to the, to the sound that I was going for. Um, some other things we have to consider is that I'm taking a sample with a uh, MacBook's uh, built-in microphone, which probably isn't the best instrument to sample audio with. Um, and also, I'm only using one oscillator to create this periodic waveform. If you really wanted to make um, a better approximation, you might use several oscillators uh, to do that with. Uh, and so, in a nutshell, that's basically digital signal processing using the Fast Fourier transform. Here's uh, some of the sources that I checked out in researching this talk. Um, there's some really great explanations about how the FFT works, and also some other really awesome uh, examples refresh that, um, of how, uh, how this can be implemented for, for various use cases. And that is my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you.